the adhesive's gone off now. So what I've done is I've made sure that these sockets are isolated and then I've covered them all with small plastic bags so that they won't get any grout on them when we're grouting. Before you start grouting you should also check as well to make sure that your tiles don't need sealing first because some tiles do need sealing before you grout them. I've also used a solvent wipe to clean all the tiles and that's just to get any excess tile of these if it's got on the front of the tiles off before we grout it. So I just gave them all a good wipe and I've also cleaned between the worktop and the tiles. Although I won't be siliconing that today because I'll have to grout this and then let the grout harden. So I've now added some powdered grout to this container and then I'm going to add some cold water to it and give it a mix with a piece of plastic. I've now mixed some grout and I'm going to apply that using the grouting float which is uh, made of rubber and these are really handy for, for grouting. So all you need to do is get some grout on the trowel or on the float and then just spread it all over the tiles. And all you have to do is work it into the joints. And when you're doing it, don't worry about getting it on surrounding areas because it, it will come off quite easily off more surfaces. As well as using the grouting floats for pushing the adhesive into the joints you can also use it for cleaning the adhesive off the tiles as well so if there's any excessive adhesive on there you can just scrape it off then you can just pull that back in your container and then you can use that again elsewhere So again, I've got my piece of plastic pipe and I'm going to run this up and down all the joints and across all the joints to give us a nice finish. So by doing this you actually ensure that the grout's pushed in between the tiles and you also get a nice finish as well. And then when I've done all the vertical joints I then do all the horizontal joints. Now as I go along I'm just wiping any excessive adhesive off the worktop and I'm also just shoving the sponge underneath the bottom row of tiles just to clean out any grout that's got in there because we need to leave a, a nice gap in there for siliconing afterwards. Once the grout's dried and it's gone dull like it has here you can then start to remove it with a sponge. Uh, the trick here is to have a damp sponge but not a wet sponge you don't want it too wet. 
So what you can do then is just clean all the excessive grout from the surface of the tiles. And then when the sponge is dirty like that, you can just go and give it a rinse out. So once you've rinsed it out, again, make sure it's damp and not wet. You can then continue cleaning. The kitchen is now fully grouted. But as you can see, the tiles are full of grout dust, which will just need washing off. Uh, it's pretty easy to get that off actually. You just need a damp sponge. So what I'm waiting for now is the actual grout itself to go off between the tiles and then we can just give it a good wash down with a damp sponge. Any of the gaps in the corners or the gap between the worktop and the tiles will be sealed in a couple of days using some silicone. So all the grout dust now that's remaining on the tiles can be removed quite easily just by using a damp sponge. 